Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Today I decided to visit Cool Cat because I discovered something very suspicious at my rescue hut. I think this is sabotage. I'm not sure though. You were here. I was. I didn't notice. I was experimenting. Sorry. The bombs didn't seem to have much of an effect. No. I was expecting more. We were having a very small chit chat and then we realized our bases share the same X coordinates. And that means they're almost aligned. And what do you do when you have a direct line from someone's base to another? Exactly, you dig a tunnel for rail connections. And it actually turned out really fine because it's composed of three sections. Uh, this is my side. Then we do have a beautiful valley over here, which we can have some sort of a bridge. And this is Cool Cat's side. I was thinking maybe he can make his own tunnel, I can make my own tunnel, and then we work together on the bridge. I think it's going to be a fun project. And yes, you might notice I have already started working on my side. We just have a giant staircase leading up to the station. It doesn't look majestic from this side, but if you go to the other side, it looks really nice. It's a very long distance. I think it's like 100. 120 blocks. <laughs> it was a lot. And yes, since we are receiving guests, uh, we have blocks of diamond. We should always show off our wealth. You see, from this side, it kind of looks cool. I like that. That is going to be a project that we are going to work on in the near future, but in the immediate future, I need villagers. Why do you think we have an infinite pool of lava? We have to drop something in it as a sacrifice to please the gods. Anyways, I have been checking and the closest village to our base is actually the spawn village. So we're just going to take our Fletchers and take them home. You know, I do say it's close, but it's probably around a thousand blocks. Maybe more. <laughs> it's so far that I don't even come to my shop. At least the village is visible from my shop. That's a good sign, I guess. So always the main question is, how do I put you in a minecart? Can I have rails? Okay, move. This is why you should always have a mob imprisonment tool. Okay. We got one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep them safe for the moment. And I am going to lay tracks. I do have a feeling it was more than 1,200 blocks, but I have set up the tracks until our base and I kind of lost it. Ah, yes, over there. So before we move the villagers, I think here's what we're going to do. We're going to start making a villager breeder. I saw a design online. I have no idea how it works. But basically, we're going to need 12 glass. Uh, this is centered, right? Yes. Anyways, slabs on top, a stupid fence. For some reason, four beds, and apparently it has to be in this configuration, two trap doors, four carpets on the corner like so, and again four trap doors, like so. Well that was easy, we just have to remove these two trap doors in the center, and we're operational. It's just a matter of getting them in. Well that's fine, let us bring the villagers. The villagers that we are bringing here are kind of important because they're going to breed us the children, correct? We don't want them to be permanently damaged. So I thought to myself, let us make everything foolproof. We do have an activator rail. They should be dropped in there. That is the hope. We just need to walk back, make sure every single track is already placed and there are no hiccups. It's a very long journey. I do have a feeling a furnace minecart is not able to push the cart that high. We will see. The fun part is, uh, once we are done, I have to remove all the tracks. Three Fold is on vacation, but if he comes back and see the tracks, he's gonna kill me. Which at this stage, it's not a huge achievement. And off he goes. Perfect. Please tell me you're gonna push him up. Okay, that worked. Yes, we can see the beacon. <laughs> We're close. Now the main problem is, is my activator rail going to work? Oh, there's my bed. I thought I lost it. Well, he's there. We just need to push him. How do I push you? Go. Yes, the second dude is in his minecart and hopefully... This will go without any hiccups. And I can also clean up the mess. Maybe I should clean up the mess whenever we're sure he's safe and we can have babies. Oh my goodness. Go down. <laughs> go down the pit. You stupid idiot. Didn't want to punch you, but you asked for it. I go get bread. Oh. We're making babies. Yes. We got one. Now that we have access to villagers and we have a villager breeder, the first villagers that I want to trade with are going to be farmers for the pumpkin and melon farm. The goal is to get a ton of emeralds, so who cares what we trade? The problem with our farm is that our harvester is not working constantly because it glitches out and I don't really like that. We need to send it on some sort of a timer. Therefore, I hooked it up to an Ito hopper clock with a bunch of items inside. That hopper clock goes inside a pulse maker, which is essentially a dropper with one item going into an hopper and we're reading a comparator signal 
terminal, goes to the redstone link, and you know, powers this power drill over here. It just activated. Yes. <laughs> Great. Also, we were getting a ton of seeds which we don't really need and we don't really need to convert them into bone meal because we do have a bone farm, so I'm just voiding them with a shoot. Since we are dealing with farmers, we also have a carrot patch and one nether wart just in case for potions. Later on, we also have to make a vault room for the crops and also sort them, but that can wait until we are done with you. So how do we get them out? Well, I think the first thing that we have to do is to void a few villagers, you know, like so. Lovely. So here we're going to replace it with a slab. I'm also not extremely sure how everything is going to work. I'm assuming if we want to have a villager trading hall, it should be in this mountain. So we need to start loading them from this side? Maybe? So if we have a rail, like so... Okay, it does work. It should pick them up, I think, without killing them. Also, I do have a feeling that they're wasting food. Because I didn't get a baby. Yeah, it's falling down. Uh-oh. Okay, like this it works. In the corner. Don't nod your head. Get to work. Exactly. This is more like it. It's just that I have to wait for it to grow. At least we know what we're doing. We just need two villagers at the pumpkin farm. Maybe four. I think we have two new babies who have grown, but there is also a timer. Ten seconds. Maybe there's a third one somewhere? I guess there was. Oh, you're the baby one. <laughs> okay. Our first problem. It should have been the other way around. Maybe not. Well, we picked him up. And this is called garbage memory. The other way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That way. If nothing goes wrong, he goes into the cap farm. Go into your hole. You do realize I can bring a piston. Okay, I'm bringing a piston. Technically speaking, Cool Cat always mentioned water buckets are amazing. So I don't know, can I like wash you in? Go in. Thank you. Our first villager. Although we still need to understand if he's going to be any useful or not because we want him to buy melons or pumpkins. And unfortunately, that seems to be a chance. Uh, where's my wheat? He's an idiot. He buys beetroots. It's fine, we can grow some wheat. Very sorry, but you're garbage. He doesn't sell pumpkins or melons. The problem is that supplementaries also adds a few more trades and he was selling flax. We don't really want the flax seed. Hopefully you're gonna be better. I started transferring the farmers just as I logged in and look how many times I slept. I hate villagers. I really do. I also had to make sure that raiders and zombies are not going to get to the villagers, so we have a structure over there, and I also covered the bottom half of the pumpkin and melon farm. And don't you worry, these cells are fully compatible with the Geneva Convention. Oh, this is not Geneva. I forgot. Also, I do have a clock, and yes, at 8am, they start trading. Based on this clock, we have four guys for pumpkins and two guys for melons. And I just wanted to mention, just to set it up, look at all those emeralds. 57 blocks. It's also great because I can buy golden carrots. Threefold has gone on a trip and uh, we don't have food. But I have been thinking, what should be our next villager? Of course, librarians are great, but we're going to focus on clerics. There are a few items that we are very short on. One of them is glowstone, one of them is ender pearls. Well, we're not going to go to the end until there is an update to create. And glowstone, I don't want to go to the nether. Ever. Therefore, I do have a feeling that clerics are not going to be the worst. You know, since we are not going to the end, ender pearls are going to be very useful. Oh, and by the way, at this very moment, don't worry about the zombifying process. I have a plan. As usual, gaze into my eyes. Mesmerizing, aren't they? Their eyes are fake. But we do have the start of our villager trading hall, and yes, I do understand it's extremely garbage. The roof is two blocks tall, and we don't have librarians. But I'm guessing we will get to that in another episode, because, you know, villagers are just a pain. Although I say that, but this row of 15 was relatively easy. Anywho, we have five clerics, and each one of them has the enderpearl trade. We haven't zombified them, so the prices are a bit steep. Then we have 10 cash cows, 5 of them are masons, and 5 of them are fletchers. Fletchers are great because you can trade flint. And also string, which we should be able to make a spider farm, because you know, there is a spawner next to us. And masons are just generally great, you can sell them stone, you can sell them clay. And yes, I have a lot of levels, but 69 levels is not very important. What is important? is the profit. 244 blocks of emerald. But I have been AFK or hiding in a cave for like, I don't know, 5-6 hours and I want a change of face. Well, the change of face didn't work, the plan kind of failed, so we have to go with plan B. And if you guys have any idea how the hell can I have a drowned farm inside the dripstone cave, please let me know. I did everything by the book, it's not working. But I don't think the plan B is going to be that bad. You guys are going to probably like it. But first things first, uh, we need resources. I think I have enough blocks of emerald in order to switch two of my beacons, so let us do that. Very cool. 
two of them have been switched with emeralds and as a result we're filthy rich. I needed those resources in order to make a few parts from create. Server restart in one minute. I guess see you soon. I need to be in my home. Safe. Now that we have some resources, we need to do some industrial espionage. So in the Mac folds, uh, there is something. How do you get to the other side? Yes, as I was saying, in the Mac folds, there is a system which I don't really know how to make. A vertical chute. Uh -huh. So you can pump items up into a belt which goes into a barrel. That's going to be useful. While my resources are being prepared, let us talk about the plan. We do have a decent supply of stress units and I really want to bring everything in our base together. So here's what we're going to do. First, we need to move our ore processing to a more permanent location, but there are parts of it that we need to improve. Crushing wheels are already fine, but I don't mind the washing process to be a bit faster. So that's one part that we have to improve. I have done a crazy amount of mining for copper and yes, we had a bit of a problem. Well, if you get that much copper, the system is going to be clogged up so we need to have i don't know more presses in order to make ingots so those are the two areas that we need to improve let me move everything and i'll be right back actually i ran into my first problem half the mountain is missing and i don't really want to have cheaty facades i have to fill that entire thing in without a builder's wand there is a wand of symmetry uh what okay let's make it because i did not understand a single thing so brass goes here and we need to give you a redstone signal oh boy you're very fast and fun. Awesome. Thank you. Well, it looks like a staff, so I'm not going to complain. How do you even work? It's reading time. So it's not great for what you want to do, but it should help a bit. I think. Yeah, it's definitely faster. Yeah, way faster. I just have to fill in the central block. I have started moving everything. Our input chest is going to be here. Some of the ores are going to automatically appear here. Then we are going to start sorting them. Some of the items have to go to our item vaults. Some of them have to be stored, which we will filter them here. And this time I decided to add more fans. Well, currently we have six fans, but I was wondering maybe we can put three more underneath. These guys seem to be in the correct direction. But I think now we're going to mess it up a bit. Uh, if we have a vertical gearbox, yeah. So you get another gearbox, I guess. Yes, it's correct. Eh, not really. I don't have space for the water. Yeah, it should be like this. Okay, it's fine. There is no need to panic. We just need more gearboxes. So that should connect those fans, which are going the incorrect way. So more gearboxes. Yep, and by using a ton of gearboxes, I think we're doing fine. So this time as a buffer for all the garbage that we're going to get, we're going to have a massive vault. That is 27 blocks, each block can hold 2000, so that's like 54,000 blocks. That should be enough. I mean a 54,000 block buffer should be okay. It's great, there are nuggets, let's go crazy. And by crazy I mean we add two more rows. Exactly. It's been a bunch of time later and I think we are operational. I just need to set up the filters. But basically what we are doing is that we have an input chest, then we have an item vault which is going to be our buffer, and also everything that we mine is going to appear on this conveyor belt. After some filtering some items are going to be crushed, they're going to be sorted, because some of the items do not require any further processing. For example, if we get nuggets of experience, they just come here. Or if we manage to put some redstone ore inside and we crush it and we get the redstone, we can just extract it from there. I think that should be the correct filter. It's not, but it will be. Don't you worry. The central conveyor belt is for everything that has to be further processed, meaning ores. They come over here, they get washed, and we also have a filter over here so that it does not allow any items in. You know, the raw ore does not have to go inside the vault. After we get the nuggets and the byproducts, everything comes into this vault. The nuggets are going to be sorted again, they're going to be pressed and gathered, and whatever other byproduct that we get, which is inside this vault, will be extracted and goes to our system. You know, things like lapis, redstone, clay, gunpowder, etc. Basically anything which does not have to be packed. But this is more or less a semi more efficient setup that we already had. What is the difference? Amazing question. The difference is that we're going to automatically sort out everything that we get from our monstrosity and send it to ore processing, which kind of means I want to make this guy bigger. And another question is, can I put mending on you? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. A super glue with mending. We just need to repair it a bit. Oh, it's done. Currently, the tunnel board that you see in front of you is 7 high by 17. This is 9 high and it has reached a point that I need to have scaffolding. And now it is 11 high by 21 wide. I think anything bigger than this is just going to be crazy. And I have been also thinking we need extra vaults for extra items. By the way, this is flint. But dripstone is probably just going to be converted into clay, so we don't need that. And granite to gold. I think we are going to switch them with quartz and moss. I like moss. Who doesn't? That gives us exactly 10 storage units. Therefore, our filtering system also has to be placed here. This is a portable storage interface. And if I manage to rotate this one, this should be a connection. 
Yes. This is how we're going to filter everything. Some of them are going to go to a deep storage unit and some of them to the factory. This one, I think we're going to use it for the factory, the ore processing, because it's pretty close to the conveyor belt. Yeah. And this side we're going to use for the blocks. Those ones. I think in order to set proper filters, I have to do on a session of mining, but for the moment, this is our filter, based on the items that were available in the bore. I believe what we should be able to do is to have a smart shoot, apply the filter, paste a stupid barrel, activate the bore, and we should get those items inside the barrel. Correct. It has been a while later and I had to make a few adjustments uh, moving the tunnels a bit because uh, they were not working. I have also hooked up that item interface into a conveyor belt which goes into a few chutes with a fan down there, you know, which is pushing items upwards and everything that has to be processed lands on this belt. I also set up the other item interface for the cobblestone and things that have to go into bulk storage and here is where I ran into a problem. I need to make the stupid storage first because here's the thing, in order to make sure that everything is going to work the way that I want it to work, work, I have to get rid of the items like stone and deep slate. All of those barrels that you see over there contain hundreds of thousands of them. A bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point. I suppose it's time to clean up the place a bit. And I think I have to change one of my beacons to haste. We don't have anything to scaffold, hence furnaces. You know, I should just get another stupid beacon. Give me haste too. But fear not, very soon we are going to make a wither skeleton farm. Technically speaking, we can bring the monstrosity to dig everything for us. This is Y level 84. This is 94. Four. So it's 10 blocks and monstrosity is 11 blocks tall. So it's gonna dig everything here. It's probably gonna kill those things down there. No, it's just literally going to miss them. But I have to empty everything here. Okay, let me do that. I have cleaned up everything in its path and this is the area that has to be gutted out. And I'll be very honest with you, it's a bit scary. I know I don't have anything which resembles a base, but still it's scary. Hello, be polite. Thank you. I had to move the beacon because I wanted to put the tunnel board there and without speed, it's garbage. How do people live with vanilla? Anyways, if this goes fine, we're going to be fine. If it doesn't, I'm gonna rage quit. Well, so far so good. Start digging. Please. As a person who's always cautious, maybe we should check where it's going. Oops, not like that. Also, I would like to remind you, this width is not an overkill because I have to place some vaults. And I am going to actually have more deep storage for a few items. As long as we don't hit the cows and sheep, I think we're good. Oh, you ended. Okay. We can go a bit further. Well, I came up to here. Yeah, that should be fine. We shall push you a bit more. And I just realized item interfaces are wrong. Why? This is a problem when you're playing on hard. He picked up a dirt and he's never ever going to despawn. And I had no idea that's under my base. But very fine, we are operational. What you see down there is going to be the expansion to our vault room. 20 more vaults, 10 on this side and 10 on that side. Or you know, 10 on this side, 10 on that side, however you want to view it. But since I have to go up and down a lot, I thought to myself, uh, let us fix the elevator. I had to place down a very small windmill up here because there was no way in this universe that I could bring up a shaft without it being visible. But I think everything else should be covered by a roof uh, one day. And when that day is going to be, I don't really know. You need so many gearboxes. It's just that uh, we need to have a gear shift and then we shall have the hose pulley. I guess we can put the toggle latch up there, a redstone link next to it, frequency vault. You should also have the button somewhere where I can press it. Uh, well, for the moment, we don't have any other locations. Uh, we just put it there until I figure out what I want to do with the facade. You're not going down. Shouldn't you go down? No, of course not. It was a sequenced gear shift. We need a gear shift. And good, it's already facing the correct way. If we press the button, nothing happens. Is there something under you? No? Okay, yeah, that was my bad. Uh, I misplaced the toggle latch. But now it's working fine. You see? It went down. Now it can come up. And the reason that it's not going way down is that we have ladders here. Again, for the moment, we don't really have a location for the button because I haven't built the base yet. But this should bring it down. Yeah, there was a block of dirt. Now it should come down. Finally. Even if I glitch, I'm not gonna die. Don't you worry. Just before I start working on the vault, there is one confession that I have to make. There is a chance you might notice it, so I better come up clean. Our ore processing is on that side, meaning that we're going to get every single item from there. But the problem is that my filtering is going to be from this side, meaning that we have to transfer every single item to this side and then sort them. A bit stupid. I know, but the whole point of the storage system is that I would be able to dump items from my own base and then sort them into the vaults. Yes, in hindsight, I should have been wiser and made the factory on the other side, but what can you do? Also, I thought maybe we can brass things up a bit. Yes, lovely. 
and I fell down. <laughs> I can't put a city in there, you stupid idiot. Actually, as it turns out, it seems I can. This is tall enough. Here is my seat. Take me down. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, you have to glue the seat. <laughs> this is called being stuck in an elevator. Here is your stupid glue. Here is your seat. Be safe. Please. 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 Okay. We're good. Also, I do have a feeling that you can go a bit faster. Uh, 512. 512. This is probably something that I'm going to regret, but let us see. Maybe I can still cover that thing. So are you any better? Yep. Perfect. A simple water elevator would have been easier. And also, unfortunately, we are playing on fabric, so the new update to create which brings the elevators is not available. Yet, we are all waiting for it. Oh, I just realized something. When the elevator is down, this is how you would pass. The stupid seat. <laughs> That's the problem. Even if we put it on a timer, I'm not gonna like this. <laughs> Waste of time. As usual, a few hours later, and I think my brain ran out of RAM. Because I forgot what I was doing. But our sorting system seems to be fine. Uh, I'm actually adding all the resources, including iron, copper, flint, coal, whatever. If we put the garbage inside, we should be able to see them being sorted. Come on. It takes time. It's a long journey. But yeah. Redstone went in. Didn't I put something else? I put coal. Where did the coal go? Ah, it worked. Sorry. I thought maybe we should use the closer vaults for items that we're going to constantly use, like iron, copper, gold, etc. And yes, you might notice I'm not using the elevator. I'm taking the stairs. I'm just gonna put a water elevator, nothing else. And one of the reasons that I tell you that my brain is out of memory is that I actually forgot what the hell was wrong with the elevator. I honestly don't know and I messed up the conveyor belts. It's fine. Let me finish it. I'll be right back. It's me again. Hi. There's a zombie. <laughs> that is not why I brought you in. There is another reason. Oh, you picked up something as well, you jerk. I was hoping you are gonna just despawn. Anyways, that's not why I brought you in. Uh, there is another reason. I was thinking, uh, what if instead of a roof, uh, we have glass? You know, so that from up there you would be able to see the storage and also from down here you would be able to see the sky. There is a very slight problem with that plan, the stupid conveyor belt. So over here we don't really have a choice because this is under our home, but over there we do have a choice. What if I make the conveyor belt go around everything? You know, instead of the main one being in the center, it just goes on a loop? I think we should do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the next day and we have finally made progress. The conveyor belt in the middle is going to be removed. Now we just have a loop. There are smart chutes down here. Yes, this one is empty, so I just put my bed in. But they do have filters, so it should work. I have been testing it for a while, but let us give it a crazy test. And by crazy test, I just mean that we're going to give it a random assortment of garbage. For the moment, instead of voiding all the garbage, I do have a barrel over here, which gets the excess items that we're not filtering. Because they're garbage, and we don't need them. You know, things like dead bushes or very random rocks which literally have no use. We have an assortment of random garbage. We shall take a nap. We dump all the garbage inside here like so. And obviously we go and watch. Okay, we're getting the zinc. Zinc goes in. Paul has to take a very long loop, but it goes there. Was that an iron sheet? I'm not sure. No, it was an ingot. It went in. Seems to work fine. We're even filtering gunpowder. As far as I'm concerned, everything works fine. Oh, and by the way, there are a bit of garbage in some of the barrels. Yes, here. Because I changed the filtering and the iron already went in. It should come here. Yes. But okay, seems to be fine. I have cleaned up everything. And I guess now we have to start connecting our quarry to the vaults. You know, so that I don't have to do things manually. But generally, we're keeping all the ingots, all four of them, on these sides. Then we have redstone, coal, quartz, gunpowder, nuggets of experience and lapis. And things that are going to be rarely used are here. Flint, blackstone, magma blocks, diorite, moss, etc. So here's the point. We need to bring the items from our quarry over there to literally under our basement over there. I don't really want to do more conveyor belts. I think we're going to go with ice. Or maybe we can just go with conveyor belts. I don't know. Well, it has to come somewhere around here. Okay, let me see what I can do. It's going to be a very long conveyor belt. I'm not sure if it's good. Ah, so it took a while, but I think we are operational. There is only one way to find out. This is the input conveyor belt, which comes from the quarry. There is a horrible zigzag under there because we ran into this conveyor belt, but I think if I place down the chutes, everything should work. You know, one and two. We should get the garbage. Yes. It will let us go and track the garbage, I guess. Everything is coming in. It has to go on a very giant loop, but yeah, we're getting the lapis. Seems to work fine. You have no idea how rich this is going to make us. Because I just have to take the quarry to a cave and then everything else is automatic. What is that? A dripstone. 
Okay, that's one of the things that has to be voided. I knew that, I kind of forgot. So what are the garbage that we're getting? Yeah, I dropped the coal and the shafts. I just wanted to see if the conveyor belt works. That's perfect, literally perfect. It's just that I'm not really sure if we have enough storage. I might have to increase the size of some of the vaults. Uh, let's activate you, you know, so that we get more garbage on the conveyor belt. It's emptying all of these barrels automatically. Oh my goodness, <laughs> deep slate. That needs a giant vault. So you might notice that we're getting deep slate, which is going into the buffer chest. That means that the vault is full. This is why we also need to have a voiding system because we don't need like a million deep slate. Of course, we can also increase the size of the vault. So don't you worry. I think right now it's like too wide. So only 36,000. Okay, that's a problem now. <laughs> we just void a few manually. It's still coming. What the hell? Oh my goodness. You know, this is a 200 block long conveyor belt and we're still getting deep slate. We should void it. Yeah, it's clogging up the system. No, I am making more vaults, but it takes time to process all the sheets. So here is lava and here is a chute. Yes, we're fine. There was a huge backlog, so it's going to be fixed. Don't you worry. I have made more vaults and on the other side, I have already expanded the vaults. On this side, uh, they were only too wide. So let's make them wider. They're going to be five wide. Oops, don't you worry. I have more and I think I have more. <laughs> One more layer? Yeah, I think for the moment it shouldn't be that bad. Wait a minute. I have two black stones. That's not good. Well, actually, it's not that bad because that means we have two empty vaults. Just in case we want to sort something else. Your black stone, we change you to my bed. Nothing was in it anyways. That one takes priority. Just in case you're wondering, what we have done today is incredibly important because now we have an automatic quarry, automatic ore processing, and automatic sorting system. It's actually not fully, fully automatic. I have to set a few filters for the ore processing, but that's it. Kind of covered my mine shaft, which is fine. We're going to find new mine shafts. What I thought to myself before we wrap up today's episode, maybe we should do a bit of mining just to make sure that everything works. Very good. We're digging. I have already mined here. Okay. Just to clarify something, some of you guys have been telling me that I should make the quarry fully automatic so that it will also place down the tracks. I know that you can do that, it's just that I don't really want to. For every block that I dig in order to make a tunnel and lay the tracks, the guy is actually going to mine 100 blocks for me. And in this way, I would know where it's going to dig, I will know if it's going to run into an ocean or an ancient city, and I can control everything. So this is why it's not laying tracks. That's it. And also, this is why it's massive. We should really start making buildings. I get creepers everywhere. I think that's what we're going to do next episode. The entire episode, we just make buildings. Anyways, we have the items. They should be sorted. It's not gonna be sorted because you have to reset it once. Now we should get items. Yes, yes. Also, I think the ore processing is off, so let us activate it. Because definitely we are also getting ores. Just a second. Yep, we're functional. Holy. So items are being sorted and other items are also being processed. Perfection at its finest. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye-bye.